Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to sand and polish this guitar. So I'm going to demonstrate the process for that um, right from the beginning basically. But as, uh, as usual, I'm going to bore you into tears with some information first. So a lot of people don't really understand the concept of how sanding and polishing works. They, they just rub some guitar polish on there after they've done their clear coating and they hope that that's going to give them the finish that they're looking for. What happens when you clear coat is you leave little, little peaks and valleys. It's just the way the paint atomizes. You're never going to, well, I don't think you're ever going to get it perfectly smooth. So you get a little bit of orange peel. Those who are good at it and know what they're doing, they're familiar with it, they don't get as much but they still get some. And if you want it to be perfectly flat and smooth and really a mirror finish, you need to sand that out and then you polish it back. So people are always worried about sanding it. They think they're gonna wreck it, but that's, that's the first step in the process. That has to be done in order to get it smooth. What you wanna do is get to the highest grit of sandpaper that you can. That's gonna make your polishing much easier, okay? So, when you put your clear coat on your surface, I've already got this face sanded pretty much, but when you put your clear coat on your surface, it's got a layer that forms a build up, right? And it should be pretty much even throughout the surface, but when you get to the edges, the corners, clear coat doesn't stay on corners very well. It doesn't build up there nearly as thick as it does in the other areas. And if you've got a little bit of imperfection, a little bit of orange peel on the corners, nobody's going to see it because it's not a flat surface anyway. So when you're sanding out your clear coat, uh, I recommend that you try and avoid, go, you can either just not go quite to the edge, or if you do go to the edge, don't go as aggressive. Uh, don't use your, uh, your coarser papers on the edge. Just wait until you get to your highest grip before you do that. That, might make, that statement might not make sense to you yet, but it will in a second. So, what I do, uh, today I'm going to be using an orbital sander. You can do this by hand, obviously. And uh, it's actually, if you don't have as high a grid of paper, it's better to do it by hand because technically you're going to get the smoothest sanding if you do it all in one direction. All unidirectional, like up and down the face. And that's what I do when I'm sanding by hand. But uh, today I'm going all the way up to 5,000 grit. And I know that even with the orbital sander, I'm going to have absolutely no trouble polishing that out at that high a grit. So I'm not going to do it by hand because I don't want to take that much time. So what you do for the sanding portion is you start with your coarser grit. And in this case, by coarser, I don't mean 150 or something like that that you would use to sand wood. Uh, I'm going to start with 1500. If I'm doing it by hand, I get a little bit lazy. I want, to, I want to get those valleys out quicker, so I use 1000 grit. But yeah, today I'm going to use 1500 because I'm using the orbital sander. And I'm going to sand it until, what, what happens when you start is you'll see the higher areas dull out immediately. The top of those orange peel valleys, they dull out because they get sanded right away. And then you're left with little glossy spots, kind of. So you sand until it's all a matte finish, all an even matte, all the gloss is gone. And then as soon as you achieve that, so what happens with your 1500 is you've put a bunch of 1500 grit scratches in your guitar. They're very, they're so small you're not even going to be able to see them. But that's technically what they are, is the abrasive on the paper is creating scratches. So then you move up to a higher grit. I'm going to move from 1500 to 3000. And I'm going to use the 3000 to sand out those 1500 grit scratches. I'm just going to go over the whole thing and smooth it out to 3000. Now this paper's got a very small uh, foam backing to it, which I find makes it uh, nicer to work with. And if you've got just a little bit of imperfection, it'll get in there without too much difficulty. And then to take out the even smaller, twice as small, in fact, the even smaller scratches left by the 3000 grit, I'm gonna go over it, I'm gonna go over it again with 5000 grit, okay? The objective here is to get to the highest grit possible because that means you're leaving the finest scratches possible. And the finer those are, the smaller they are, the easier it's going to be to polish them out. Then you need a compound. I'm going to use liquid ice for this. Uh, I like 3M. I've used it in, in other videos. 
there are there are many of these things, lots of different polishing compounds. Meguiar's works pretty well and it's very easy to find. If you get too high enough grit, it's not a problem. Um, this stuff is supposed to remove scratches 1,200 and up. So with 5,000, you'll have no problem whatsoever. This is not just a, a polish, okay? This is different than that. The compound is intended to, uh, when you buff it in there, when you rub it in, it melts into those scratches and fills them in so that you get that perfectly smooth, glossy finish. If you just go over your sanded surface with something like a Dunlop guitar polish, you're probably not going to get the result you want, okay? Uh, a lot of people try and use car wax. I think what you need to do is go with the polish, and then if you want, you can use a paste wax or something like that over top of it to protect it, but don't just jump straight to turtle wax, or if you do, make sure it's the turtle wax compound, not just the wax, okay? So, as usual, uh, now I'm going to bring you in closer here. I'm just going to quickly show you the, what I'm looking at in terms of my sanded face, which I've already done here, and then the back, where I'm going to demonstrate for you. Uh, I'm not going to do the edges, the sides, because they look awesome, honestly. And uh, it's, it's kind of risky going on the sides. You don't want to sand through your clear. If they don't turn out well, fine. Uh, you can sand them with your palm or or with an eraser, if you've got a flexible eraser, some people like to use that as a sanding block for the edges. But mine turned out well, and I don't see any reason to risk sanding off my clear coat on the corners, so I'm just going to leave it alone. So yeah, I'll bring you in closer, show you the difference, and then I'll shut up, and I'm sure everybody's happy about that, and uh, we'll get to work on the back of this. Alright, so let's see if I can show you what we're dealing with here. This is my front face. You can see that I've still got glossy areas here and here. I haven't bothered to sand those because I won't be able to get in there and polish them properly because the studs are still there. The uh, mounting ferrules or whatever you call them. So I'm leaving those alone. The rest of this, it's actually picking up reflections and stuff. It looks almost glossy because of how fine a sanding I've done on it, all the way up to 5,000. If you're looking for our, a matte finish or more of a satin finish. Uh, this is a good way to get it. Kind of a stealth finish as some, some people call it. Um, just put on your, if you don't have a matting agent for your clear, just put on your gloss clear and then sand it down to a really fine like 3000 grit, nice and even. And you'll end up with something like this, which is basically a satin finish. So this side's ready to be polished. But, like I said, the first step is sanding. So, over here we have uh, the back of the guitar, which has not been sanded yet. It's still at its full original gloss. But, if you look very closely, you can see that it's not perfect. It's got some orange peel in it. So, let's take that out. I've got my 1500 grit paper. Now you can see what I was talking about, hopefully. Can you? Kind of. So, right on the surface is a matte finish, basically, right on the top. But you can see accented even more. You can very clearly see how uneven it was, even though you couldn't tell very well before. Uh, because the lower areas are still glossy. The paper hasn't gotten in there and sanded them yet and the high spots have been sanded. So what I'm gonna do is continue until it's all a matte finish, because I know I've got more buildup in those high spots, so I'm not gonna sand through. I'm just gonna keep going until it's all a matte finish, and then I'm gonna switch to my 3000 grit, and go at it again, and then once more with the 5000. 
Now that that's done, I'm going to take off my 1500 grit and put on my 3000. And I'm going to go over it again and then I will kind of try and show you that reflection again. And you can maybe use that as a gauge for how smooth it is because that's kind of part of how I go about determining how good it is. Uh, right now, if I look at the reflection of the light in there, since I'm not looking through a camera, I can actually see like the details in the light bulb and everything. So that should become more clear as I go to higher grits. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to the 5,000 grit. Uh, I'll take now to address, or I'll take this time to address uh, a topic that I'm sure a few of you are wanting, wondering about. You might be thinking, why am I not wet sanding this? And the reason for that, wet sanding is nice. The water and occasionally dish soap, if you do it that way, allows the paper to slide nicely. And it's designed to make it not clog up as quickly. And it's, it slips better, so it's, it's easier for you to do it if you're doing it by hand. Obviously, I'm not running into any issues because I'm using a palm sander. And my paper is so fine that it's not jamming up at all. And I just use a cloth and like this. I just do that when it starts to get too much dust in it, and that fixes it right up. So there's really no reason for me to do that. And in the case of something made of metal or plastic, I would use water to help lubricate it and uh, you know all of that. But this is a piece of wood. Everybody seems to forget that a guitar is a piece of wood. And if you get water into any of these holes or whatever, and they get into the wood, it can expand, it can warp a little bit. And uh, if water gets under your paint, that's obviously a bad thing. So really, it's, it's kind of a risky move, wet sanding. And I don't see why people would do that on a guitar. There's really no point. Anyway, that being said, here's that reflection again at 3000 grit. So for me, at least it looks a little more clear. I don't know how it'll come out in the camera. Uh, now I'm gonna go over it with the 5000 grit and then it'll be ready to polish. Okay, so that's all the sanding done now. Just gotta make sure that this is nice and clean and then it can be polished. That first pass with the 1500 was by far the longest. In fact, I didn't even film all of it. Because uh, smoothing out that that orange peel in the first place is going to be the, the most time consuming part. And then taking out the scratches from the previous papers after is actually very quick and, and easy to do. So uh, now I'm going to get this cleaned up a little bit and we'll move on to the polishing.